So I don't want to spend our whole time in class working on this one problem. I mean, there will be a couple problems on your exam on this. But maybe think of it this way. If it's hard for you to wrap your head around it, think about it. You can always draw a, you can always draw a tree right, that goes... No, yes. So probably not getting a four. My roll my roll probably not getting a four. Yeah. Okay, let's let's redo this. Either I get a four or I don't get a four. What's probably I get a four? One out of six. Probably I don't. Four out of five out of six. Okay? So I need to get how many no's? Five. I feel like maybe you guys are better with the trees. So how do I get to this spot here? No fours? Multiply. Multiply them. So it's gonna be so if you need if you, if it helps you to draw the tree, then by all means. The question is get this wrong in the exam, we'll draw a tree, then draw a tree. Is that, is that clearer that way? You guys look at it that way? You kind of see the visual of the tree? Um, so it right, means that, I mean, you have this big tree, I mean, you can draw the whole tree out if it helps you. And, you know, I mean, I guess you could find all the rest of them if you really wanted to and add them up. But it's a lot easier just to find this one part for no fours. Again, really easy to find no or no or all because there's only one way to do either one of them. Has anybody seen my board? Oh, it's over here. Uh, so what do you guys get for this? Okay. Who got who got an answer for it? Yeah, 4.402. Perfect. Great. Now, there's probably at least one four. That means all of these, oops, go this way. That means all of these other options down here, if I had done this tree out all the rest of the way, right? If, if, if all these other trees had kind of all come around, then it's all these other ones. How do I find that, the easy way? Yep. Oops, oh, that was wrong, not equals, minus, my bad, um, 0.598. All right, questions? Everybody feeling all right with that part? Okay. Um, so let me ask you, if it was um, the probability, um, well, it's, it, yeah, we just did that. So here, same thing, right? A plane, 0.716. Um, how many plane, how many flights are there in, in the country or in an airport? Thousands. And that, they want to know more. There's tons and tons and tons of them. If I take three, that doesn't change this, this probability. However, however, Um, here, if I only have, how many, how many people do I have? 22. 22. If I have 22 people and I take a child or two children or three children, does that change the probability? Yes. One or two or three planes out of thousands of planes does not change the probability. One or two or three students out of 22, totally different story. Am I right on board? So what's probably you pick at least one girl? Well. I need to find the probability that I pick. No girls. Yep, no girls. 
Everybody on board with that? So I need to find the probability that the first one, so one minus probability of no girls is, that means boy and boy and boy. Everybody okay with that part? Yeah? Okay, so what's probably that it's a boy? The first one's a boy. Let's find that part first. What was that? 14 out of 22. Uh, 14 out of 22. Yeah, 14 out of 22 is the first one. Now, after I pick that boy, I cannot pick the boy. I'm not going to say, well, I'm going to pick three students. I'm going to pick, I'm going to pick this guy. Oh, and I'm going to pick this guy again. And oh, I'm going to pick this guy again. I won't pick him three times. Everybody on, see what I'm saying? I'm picking three different students. So after I pick one boy, how many boys do I have left? 13. Out of how many students? 21. As I pick that boy, then I have how many left? 12. 12 out of 20. Does everyone feel like they a little bit better about this now? Ah, one thing. Okay. Uh -oh. Hold on. on Thursday, right? Um, and don't, okay, so whoever get, who gets stressed about math? So if you focus about, oh my gosh, what if I don't understand this one? Or, oh, I'm not sure if I get this one. Or do I really have that? Don't stress about what you can't control, right? All you can do is prep the best that you can prep. And then don't go down this what if, what if rabbit hole. I can see people go down there. What if, what if they ask this and I don't know it? Or what if this is wrong? Right? Or, that, or what if I get it wrong? What if I fail? You've already, you're already thinking about what happens if you fail before you even take the test. Right? And what happens is, is that your brain has this much working memory. If you take some of it worrying about what, what might happen if you don't do well on the test, then all of a sudden, you only have this much left to working memory to work on the stuff. Do you guys understand what I'm saying? So you're actually hurting yourself. You're, you are literally making, it, making the test harder for you to do because you're only using you know, two thirds of your brain. Like, I don't know if you guys have ever, is anybody ever nervous talking in front of people? What happens is, if I get really nervous, then part of my brain is going shh, right? And you're trying to like think through what you want to say, and that's the same sort of thing that happens when you're when you're taking a test if you're worrying about it, right? So um, really try just do the best you can do, right? That's all you can do. It's all you can ask of yourself is the best that you can do. So don't worry about what you can't control. Just focus on what is in your control, which is prep for it the best you can, and then you know you did the best you could to prepare, and then don't sweat it. Kind of um, yeah, like, I, like, you know, I, I play a soccer on this team, and we got, we lost, we tied five to five, but like, I'm in the goal, so I can either freak out about all these goals that they got by me, or I can say, okay, was there anything I could do about that one? No, that was a good shot. Okay, then don't worry about it, right? And then the ones that maybe was a problem, I can say, okay, well, next time I need to make sure I don't do this. You know, I got to make sure that I, you know, watch for that or I, I, or I position myself better or whatever. But then don't dwell on it because if you dwell on it, then you're, all you're going to do is screw yourself up for the next one. Just focus on what you need to change and then, and then make sure you change that next time. Right? 
Okay, um, and that's kind of the thing I would say because people all the time I sit and stress out about what they about what they think that before they even take the test. You're freaking out before you even take the test, and you know, and messing yourself up ahead of time. So just don't worry about it. Do the best you can. Even if you don't, even if you go in there and you're like, I did not prepare as well as should. I know ahead of time that I don't know everything. That's okay. Because the thing about it is, if you know 70% of the material, and you're freaking out about the 30% you don't know, then you're going to prevent yourself from doing well on the 70% that you do know. Do you guys understand what I'm saying? So don't sweat it. Whatever you know going in, make sure that you just do that part well. Because we've got three exams, we've got the, stuff, we've got the first two exam, three exams, plus then we have the final as well. So there's lots of, lots of room for stuff. Some blue, right? So I could draw a green, a red, red, green, or blue again. How many red do I have left? Three. I have three out of nine. Green and blue. Five out of nine. Now, here's where it gets interesting. Here are the questions. How about I draw a red one, then a green one? So a red one, then a green one. I multiply these probabilities. So that's 3 out of 10 times 1 out of 9. You can use your calculator, or you could. You can give me, so you can give me this. I'm totally happy to give you this. 
we have a 90. I'm totally fine if you give me point, was it 033? Yeah. Is that right? That's totally fine as well. I don't care. Um, red, ooh, what's that big line mean? <laughs> given. What's red given blue? Okay, red given blue means what's the probability that I drew a blue first? A hundred percent. It's given. Does everyone understand that? Let me say it one more time. If it is given, red given blue, that means I'm given what? <laughs> given I drew blue first. So the probability I drew blue first is what? A hundred percent. So that means that given blue means that I'm standing right here. Right? Means I'm standing right here. If I, is, is you guys with me? Red given blue means given blue means I'm, I, I did a blue first. That means I'm standing here. If I'm standing here, what's the probability of drawing a red? Three out of nine. Is everybody on, on board with that? At least, typically at least one third of people miss that on the exam. So I'll say it one more time. Given blue means you are already here. What's well, probably red, drawing a red given, I'm, I'm given blue? Three out of nine. Because it means you're already in this spot. Yeah. All right, both the same color. How can I do that? So that means it's red, red, or blue, blue, because you can't do green, green. Is everyone okay with that part? Yeah. Green, green is impossible. So red, red is three tenths times two ninths. Blue, blue is, blue, blue is right here. Blue, blue is six tenths times five ninths. Now here's a question. Is it red, red, and blue, blue? Or red, red, or blue, blue? Or. Or, or is we what? And. Add. We're going to add these two. Or is we. So again, or is we add, and we what? Multiply. So it's red and red, or blue and blue. So this becomes uh, 6 out of 90 plus. 30 out of 90, 36 out of 90. If you do it on your calculator, just use decimals, that's fine, so I don't care. It's fine, totally fine. Uh, probably red on second draw. Aha. Uh -huh. So red on second draw means red, red, or green, red, or blue, red. So you can find all those. <laughs>
Alex's question was, if someone has an accident, find a call rate for their high risk. So our accident people here is 0 0.006 from low risk, 0 0.015 from medium risk, 0 0.009 from, from high risk. So these are the three ways of getting in an accident. Low risk, 0 0.006 people will come from there. Medium risk, 0 0.015 will come from there. Or high risk, 0 0.009 comes from there. Um, so what Bayes theorem says, Chapter four notes, which means it's the last page, pretty much. No, second to last page. Second to last page. Then problem six through nine. So I'm going to give you guys six minutes to work on those. So if you're at home, pause the video and work on those. Problem we have right here, number six. The first thing you should ask yourself is just shorten it to what if you just had a car? <laughs> that had seven exterior colors, right? Red, blue, white, black, whatever, and three interior colors. How many different ways can you make a car from just those things? And, and just try to sort of puzzle out that part for yourself. Just the, just the seven exterior colors and the three interior colors. And really try to reason that out of how many different ways you can get a car using those two bits. If you're, you're picking a car, you're, you're, your dad says, hey, I'll give you a car. You can pick the exterior color and the interior color. Then how many different choices? Count out how many choices you think you have. And that will hopefully give you a good, a good, good clue on how to solve that one. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go over these just so people have the answer. We've got a minute to just go with me. All right, so um, we have seven exterior colors, three interior, three interior styles. Manual, automatic, and four six cylinders. So seven, for each of those you have three options. For each of those you have three options. And after that you have two options of type of um, transmission and then two types of cylinders. So it's all those numbers and you're going to multiply them. All right, and again, if you can't remember to multiply or add, just go back to like two pants and four shirts and go through and figure out how many options that gives you. Um, seven, um, does order matter? Yes, absolutely. I'm going to try that first question a second. So how many ways can be, can be arranged? I'm picking three people. How many options are first? First, second place, and third place. We're going to multiply them. Because again, each one is 112 options. There's 111 choices per second. Um, okay, this one. President, Vice President, Treasurer, Secretary. Does order matter? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it totally matters. That's whether the president or, or, or secretary. So we're picking four spots. How many options for the first? Nine. No division, because there's no chaos. Order matters. And the last one? First prize is 100, second prize is 80, third prize is 30. Does order matter? Yeah. Yes, this one it would. So three spots. How many options for the first place? Two hundred people. Second place. Yeah. If the prize is eighty dollars, order does not matter. You don't understand? Yeah. So then, you still have this first part. You're still picking three people. Two hundred times one ninety nine times one eighty is one ninety eight. But then it's chaos, right? Because order doesn't matter. You have to divide out the duplicate. Three times two times one. Got it? Yeah, extra numbers. All right. 
Um, if you have more questions, Andrew will be over there. Um, the, this last part, we are going to do this part, other part after the rest of the paper. You're going to do it after the exam. Okay, don't worry about that part. Okay. 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 Thank <laughs> you.